Another unusual tumor, uh, for Dermpath at least, is giant cell tumor of tendon sheath, uh, also known as tenous synovial giant cell tumor, comma, localized type. And uh, they're, uh, these are usually deeper down and they arise off of the tendon sheath, as the name implies, in the digits or elsewhere on the, the distal extremities, hands, feet, wrist, ankles, but the digits are the most common site. Most often, it's going to be recognized clinically that these are a deeper nodule and they're going to go to a hand surgeon and so they don't uh, end up tending to come into dermatologists or get uh, biopsied by dermatologists, at least in my practice setting. But I have occasionally seen ones that pushed up into the dermis and even one, I saw one that ulcerated the overlying skin and, and that was actually sampled by a dermatologist and sent into the derm path service. So it can happen, but most of the time they're going to be down deep and not have any skin attached. So if you see giant cells in the dermis and you're on an acrocyte, you can think of this tumor, but uh, there are other things that can have giant cells in and be dermal. So uh, make sure you've excluded other possibilities um, in, before you go thinking of giant cell tumor of tendon sheath. The other thing is there are some other features aside from just the giant cells. Here's the low power, and this is the kind, what, most often what I see is this. Deep down, uh, fragments of tendon sheath attached to the edge of this multinodular, well-circumscribed uh, tumor that's way down below the skin, okay? It's down on the tendon sheath level. This is a nice uh, picture courtesy of pathpresenter.net. Great place to get um, access if you're looking for something that you don't have in your files. You can find all sorts of stuff in their library. So uh, that's uh, the courtesy of them for this picture. Uh, here's another case from my files uh, where you, you can just see that nice sharp circumscription at the edge of the nodule and in the middle a uh, variable cellularity, sclerotic hyaluronized collagen, and even from here you can see hemosiderin deposition, not always so abundant but usually present at least focally. Very, very uh, helpful clue. So I'm going to talk to you not only about the giant cells but all the other stuff you see in giant cell tumor of tendon sheath because especially if you've not seen many of these and if you're a derm path that doesn't do, who doesn't do uh, other types of uh, pathology or, and you're a dermatologist by training, um, you may not have encountered this very many times. And the reason I want you to know all the other features aside from giant cells is that some cases of giant cell tumor of tendon sheath don't have giant cells or they have very, very sparse giant cells, the so-called giant cell poor and, and uh, giant cell free variants of, of uh, giant cell tumor of tendon sheath. So in those cases, you want to recognize all the other features because otherwise you might go, uh, go down a wrong path and there are some features in giant cell tumor that can be kind of scary. You could have uh, pretty cellular ones and mitotically active ones. So I'll show you some examples. So one clue is this. You often have these discohesive pools where the lesional cells, these mononuclear histiocytoid cells that make up the background of giant cell tumor of tendon sheath, they're actually the lesional cells, the neoplastic cells. The giant cells are kind of just along for the ride. They've just come to the party. So you can see a giant cell hanging out up there at the top and one down here. But most of the cells here are not giant cells. They're mononuclear cells that look like histiocytes. And they tend to get aggregated together and then, then fall apart and become discohesive and make these kind of open pools, like swimming pools that are crowded full of people in a hot summer day. Okay, that's the way I think of it. And the background, the collagen, look how sclerotic and homogenized it is. Very helpful, those things. Here's another area showing the same thing and the scattered giant cells here, which are usually osteoclastic giant cells, uh, often with numerous nuclei. And here's a closer look at those and the sclerotic collagen and the background mononuclear histiocytoid cells. So there, ignore the giant cells for a minute. The cells that you want to find are not just giant cells, but these guys in the background. These mononuclear cells, they have large nuclei, often with kind of pale chromatin. Uh, it's uh, pretty common to see some uh, punctate nucleoli in the middle, and they usually have abundant cytoplasm. Look at that. The abundant cytoplasm is dense and pink and it pushes the, the nucleus out to the side, okay? If you just saw those cells without giant cells, you might get a little worried about other things. You know, the cells of epithelioid sarcoma can look a little bit like that, much more atypical usually. You could start thinking of uh, plasmacytoid things or rhabdoid things like, like melanoma or myoepithelial tumors or uh, rhabdomyosarcoma. So there could be a lot of different things that enter your mind if you just saw these cells in a cellular sheet with mitotic figures and no giant cells around. So that's why I wanna bring up all these other points because I've seen times where people almost made a big mistake and almost overcalled this as something malignant because they didn't have giant cells. So that's really important. 
Here's a closer look at those cells. They are plasmacytoid or rat. To me, I kind of think of them almost as rhabdoid. Probably plasmacytoid's a, uh, maybe a more apt term. But in any case, I lump those two terms together. Um, and so recognize that's the cells. You want to find those cells in the giant cell tumor of tendon sheath. And mitoses are present usually, and they can, they can sometimes be quite abundant, actually. I mean, many mitotic figures and really look uh, quite scary when you see cases like that. There's a cellular sheets in some areas um, that you can find. And these, when you see them, you're, you're done because I don't think there's any other tumor th that I've ever seen that looks like this except for tenosynovial giant cell tumor, either the localized giant cell tumor tendon sheath form or the diffuse form that occurs in the uh, deep down in the joint, uh, the more proximal joints called uh, pigment of nodular synovitis, which we're not going to go into really today because it's outside the scope of derm path. But hemocyter in that position is really common in tenosynovial giant cell tumors in giant cell tumor of tendon sheath. And sometimes it arranges itself inside the plasmacytoid or rhabdoid histiocytoid cells, the tumor cells, in a way that looks like a halo of hemocytorin around the outside of the cytoplasm. And it's so beautiful. If you don't like that, I don't know how to make you happy. I mean, I just think those are the coolest looking cells. And, um, and uh, some people have called these a ladybird cells. I think in the United States, we call those ladybugs. But I guess, I guess these look kind of like a ladybug, maybe. Um, uh, to me, I don't know. I think they look like halos of hemocytorin. But, but uh, other folks have called them ladybird cells or ladybug cells, I guess, if you're an American. And uh, look for foamy histiocytes, xanthoma cells. Not always present, but oftentimes you'll find them, particularly around the periphery of the lesion, I feel, is when you see it, uh, most abundant of foamy histiocytes. So, uh, and there's just a little uh, a thing about it. if it's a small circumscribed nodule on the distal extremity, particularly it's called the localized form of tenosynovial giant cell tumor, and the other name for that's giant cell tumor of tendon sheath. If it's a large, deep infiltrative mass, usually around the more proximal, larger joints, then we call it the diffuse type of tenosynovial giant cell tumor, aka pigment of villanodular synovitis when it's in a joint space. Uh, if you just do derm path only, you're basically never going to see this, probably only going to see giant cell tumor, tendon sheath, localized form, and even then, it's only going to be rarely you'll encounter it. But they're basically, the only reason I bring them up is they're the same tumor, just different presentations, different growth patterns, but at higher power, they look identical, okay? They're made up of the same kind of cells. All right, and I have videos about all that that, that go over that in detail if you need, uh, if you need to see that, okay?